What's up guys, Shane here from Yuga 3D Printing and today I'm going to check out some blue silk PLA from Suntop. Welcome back guys. So as I said, today we're checking out some nice shiny blue PLA from Suntop. And they hit me up via Facebook and asked if I'd like to check this out. I said sure. And they sent me another PLA, which will be a different video, but this one, again, is nice and silky. And if you've seen like the beaver silk or the toner plastic silk PLAs, they come out really nice. So I'm really hoping that this does the same thing. Really, really. I said really a lot there. But either way, it is a regular old white box with a lot of text on it. It's just telling you it's stable melting point, good round shape, uniform diameter, rich colors, no recycled materials. Don't know if that's good or not. But anyways, this is a China-made filament. Uh, I believe this one comes out of Taiwan, to be exact. And it gives you a little window there where it is. Tells you that it's 1.75 PLA, silk blue, one kilogram. And it has its own unique serial number. The printing temp is 195 to 205C. Print bed, zero to 60C. Uh, there's a part number and then the code here as well. And once we dive in, I like the spool. So again, this has kind of like the Excelivan and I think, uh, well, so the Zoltex new spools also use this cutout design. I really like that. So you can kind of see what's in the spool, what's left, how much do I have? It really helps out. The only thing on here is the same sticker that was on the box and it is a non resealable bag. So let's get this open up real quick. One silica pack in there and mm, not real cut, no real smell to it. Sometimes they have that, sometimes they don't. Uh, the wind is not too bad. It's decent. Here on the sides, it does look really nice, but up top, Again, it's pretty nice. It's tight wind, real tight wind. It is a clip and glue style uh, spool, so it's gonna be very nice and tight. Doesn't seem to be any extra dips in there. The filament does come through. It's really hard, you can't really sell it right through here. I'll end up snipping that because sometimes that actually gets caught on the spool holder and it goes, and once it gets off it, it just kind of like chugs down and really pulls on the printer, and that's not good. So kind of keep in mind where these little tails come through. It really doesn't matter until you get down to the end where that tail is at, so you can snip it all the way down the bottom. Nothing's going to happen, but I will snip that back a little bit because I can feel it when I rub my finger through there. Yeah, so this is kind of a nice kind of blaby electric blue, uh, if I dare call it that. So I really hope this comes out nice. We're going to print my coin. I bet you a vase would look really nice in this and a few other things, maybe a nice big benchy. I did that with the toner plastics, and, or I'm sorry, with the beaver, and that looked really nice. So we'll throw this on some printers and see how it turns out. All right, guys, welcome back. So here we have a bunch of completed prints. Now, silk filament, it fills a special hole in my heart. I have to say, silk filament looks amazing when printed in vase mode. Pretty much when you print anything else, and I tried this on several printers with lots of different settings, you're going to see layer changes. It's almost inevitable. I mean, unless you are a god of retraction, you're going to see layer changes with this filament. I have my I have my settings I feel like as good as I can get them and even so you're still going to see little nicks here and there but in a vase mode print absolutely flawless uh, assuming you're acceleration jerk you're not having any ghosting but aside from that flawless prints it just looks so nice the presentation is so awesome and I posted a couple pics about this and people were just out, there's outraged at how awesome it looks. But again, it's vase mode and vase mode looks amazing when print in silk filament. I only know that because I printed some MakerBox silk filament and I did the another brand, the Beaver 3D silk filament, which all came out great in vase mode. Everything else looks okay. So I want to take a look now at a bunch of different things, the issues that I had with them. Well, actually, we'll talk about the one issue I did have. So. Here I have an unfinished, under-extruded Benchy. Okay, this was printed on the Ender 2. So is most of this other stuff. I don't know why, but all of a sudden, the Ender 2 started under-extruding and clogging with this filament. I ran a different PLA to do some parts for a different video I just recently filmed, and it was perfect, came out just fine. I switched back to this sun top silk pla and it clogged again i was like what the heck so then i put it into another printer the gtech printed just fine and then i printed this mini master sword it's about two feet long this is 45 percent scale of the model 
I printed this on the FT5. Came out just fine, aside from the retraction, but it finished the print, no under extruding anywhere, it was just fine. So for some reason, this filament no longer liked to be printed on the Ender 2. It's also a very squeaky filament, as the extruder on that Ender 2 got so squeaky printing this stuff. I tried oiling it, I thought it was the gears. No, it's just it gutting through this, this filament. So I'm just thinking it just didn't like the Bowden setup on that anymore. It liked the direct drives better. Your mileage may vary with that, I don't know. But either way, let's throw a couple of these up and see what they look like. So the very first thing I wanna look at is this completed Benchy. This one just came out great. All the different angles, you can just see it just looks awesome. This is 200% scale of the original Benchy model. And the, there was no issues printing this at all on the Ender 2. Uh, this was after one after print on that. Again, it came out just fine. No issues with it. I don't know what the deal was, but that other one just did not come out well at all. Here's the under extruded one that ended up just failing. As you can see, it works pretty well throughout the base of the model, but then once we started to get more retractions up through the cabin, it just got worse and worse and worse, more and more skipped layers. You can see the dots up in there, and then it just, you know, failed on me. As I said before, when you look at a vase mode model, it just looks absolutely perfect. There's no under extrusions anywhere. There's no flaws anywhere. It just came out great. This was on the Ender 2 as well. Most of these are printed on the Ender 2 without fail. I don't know what was up with it before, but either way, you know, the shine on this is just great. The way the light hits it from different angles. I love this model and this filament just looks great when printing in this one. Here's another awesome spiral vase. It's a little big, but yeah, it just, again, came out absolutely gorgeous. There's no issues anywhere, no under extrusions. And when it's printed in one solid line all the way through, you can't see any layer changes. It just looks super professional and everything. The bottoms all on these came out well. I had them squished down. You definitely had to squish this filament down just a little bit more than usual, but there's no issues other than, I mean, no issues with this at all. So this cloth vase was printed on the GTEC Persi 3 aluminum right after I did a lead screw upgrade. And as you can see here, there is still some light banding. It's not as major it used to be uh, as segmented, but now it's still quite there. I need to figure out why it's still doing that. But again, came out great. No under extrusion lines anywhere. First layer squished down quite a bit on there. But even that is a super matte finish. And it came out well, and again, except for the, you know, banding. All right, one more round one to do, and this would be the 3D Printing Nerd Spaceship. Uh, I found this after watching Joel's video. I was like, man, that looks great. I want to print it, and I did. But you can see throughout the print, you know, it looks good, but you'll see the retraction changes here and there throughout the print. You'll see the little blemishes here and there. And that is what sets it off the most. You really can see all of that, especially down here on this collar here, down on the engines. You can really see a lot of that. And I wish you didn't, but again, that is just a problem with using this silk filament is you're going to see a lot of those layer changes and whatnot. Again, you can see right there on the engine, a lot of that here on the mid part all those layer changes right there that you can see. As always, here's my maker coin, which looks really nice, but here you can see that solid cut almost looks like there. That is where all the layer changes happened on this print, all right there. So you're always gonna have like a seam. Uh, well, actually I was using a different profile. So I got rid of the seam in like the Benchy, you only have like a little seam right here. But this one, uh, this profile I was using was a much more pronounced seam on it. I was under extruding a little bit on this one, as you can see, I think it should have been a little bit higher. Kind of see a little bit of gap in there. And again, the retraction was not great on this one. This was one of the, like, the first model I did. I learned from this one and all the other ones looked really nice. And Silk Prelay also does not do well on overhangs at all. As you can see, almost around the entire coin, there's issues with overhangs there with good cooling, it just does not fare well with these extreme overhangs. I was also a little far away on this one. Again, this is where I figured out I really needed to squish it into the build plate in order to get good layer adhesion with this. Otherwise, it would just pop right off. I would recommend doing this on PEI. If you're using a textured build surface, you're gonna to want to use some glue stick on it or really squish this in and use a very, very fine uh, spatula to pull that up and out. 
but uh, mostly, you know, mostly decent print, but obviously some issues in there. And I showed you here again, it is the 45% scale Master Sword that's on, I think it was one on My Manufactory or Thingiverse, I can't remember. I'll put the links will be below for all of these anyways. But I mean, it's an awesome model, but again, you can see here, there's a bit of a Z seam on it here. And then this, so this was, this bottom part was your print on this, the uh, Ender 2 before I had issues. All of these had to be printed on the FT5 because they kept falling over. I, I, I posted a picture on my social media accounts. But even in here, you can see this darker line here. This is where all the retraction happened. All the layer changes happened right here. This side, there was none. I, I moved it so that there really were not many. Actually, there a little bit, there's a little bit here. The fewest amount are on this side. This side is completely covered with those. And even up here, it had issues with the retractions here. And then I had some weird like flange print on top of this and I lost the top of it. But um, you, you get the idea of it. But I mean, it looks really nice. I mean, the shine to that, obviously there's lines in the middle because it's not printed as one piece. But hey, I mean, the shine to it, it's actually a really nice size at 45%. Fits my hand really well. I think this would be a nice little like, uh, you know, yell at my kid's sword or something like that. I don't know. It just was a fun model to make at, you know, I made it at 100%. So why not make it small and see how it turns out? I like it. Ah. So all in all, it's a decent filament. I highly recommend it if you're gonna do any vases or anything that you're gonna do in vase mode, even not a vase, anything that's printed in vase mode. You can do models and large scale models in vase mode. You can do candy jars in vase mode. This stuff is gonna look amazing if printing that way. In the white, pearl colored I've had of a silk like filament, you can't notice the layer changes as much. This blue, it stands out like a sore thumb. So you really need to be careful on what your settings are. I would actually say do a lot of testing first before you decide on what your settings are going to be. I got really close. This uh, rocket was the final adaptation of my retraction settings and it still, you could still see them in there, you know, slightly. I'm just really picky and I can see them so yeah, I'm, I'm just picky about it. So full disclosure, this film was sent to me by Suntop for the purpose of review, no money was exchanged either way. I only received this roll so that I could produce the video. As you can see here, I used most of it. I'd probably say a good what, 65, 70% of it to do this. I had a lot of failures trying to make this sword on the Ender 2. Again, that uh, did not adhere to the bed as well as I wanted to. That's why I say use some glue just to help this stuff out. It doesn't adhere as well as regular old PLA. So a little bit of glue, it works great then. So yeah, big thanks to them. And thank you to you guys for watching this video. And if you found it helpful at all, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down. Talk to the comments down below. Either way, I'd love to hear from you guys on how to make these film reviews better. Did a little bit changes in here. So I wanna hear what you guys think about it. If you guys wanna stay in tune, what's going on here on my channel, make sure you're a subscriber. And if you want an email notification, make sure you ring that bell and you'll know anytime I upload new content. If you guys wanna support me financially, right below is a Patreon link. Doing dollar more monthly, I appreciate that. If you want to do a one-time donation, I have a buy me a coffee or a Streamlabs tip you can do down there. Or if you just like to do your shopping on any of the big major retailers, please go ahead and use some of my affiliate links down there. I appreciate it. A little slice of what you buy comes back here to help me build the channel. I thank you guys for watching the video. So until next time, happy printing.